All right, welcome back to Beagle Eye Visions. We're going to wrap up episode 13 with the Hermetic Principles. And like I said before, um, this ties in, this ties right into uh, the book review we did previously on the Kai Balian. Um, a lot of the, everything they're talking about is, is actually from that book. So um, it's an awesome book. I highly recommend it. And uh, let's get some more now. Let's go. Eight. Oh yeah! Oh, so sorry, so sorry. Well, That's you know, okay. it's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> it is so coming up. So, um, one thing I can add in here is uh, objects observed by the senses are ref reflected in the mind via imagination, charging the desire for moving and the will into action, generating vibration, a correspondence of the moving object in a polarized way. The effectiveness of the cause to generate the imagined result depending on how accurately the objects observed correspond to their images reflected within the mind. So I know that was a, a little bit of a mouthful and kind of a, 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 a mental tangler, if you want to call it that, a mental um, uh, gymnax gymnastics in a way there. But uh, what it's just saying is that the more accurately we can come to understand things and reflect on these things, um, the more accurate we can create change and the, uh, the higher the vibrational rate will, will um, uh, manifest. So the higher the vibration, the, the better the forms that will be created pretty much. So go back to our episode about cymatics and understand how that works. And that's moving us right into the next principle, uh, principle three of vibration, which I'm going to go ahead and, and define here for us. The third principle is the principle of vibration, which states nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. And you know, this directly relates to cymatics. And I feel that we explain vibration very clearly when it comes to like how physical forms are created in our in our reality through vibration. So this principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion. Everything vibrates. Nothing is at rest. Facts which modern science endorses and which new scientific discoveries tend to verify over and over. This hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the master of ancient Egypt and, uh, or by the masters of ancient Egypt. So the ancient mystery traditions were embodying all these principles and advancing the understandings of these principles, which came down to us uh, through the archetypal symbol of Hermes. This principle explains that the difference between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration from the all or the mind, which is spirit, down to the grossest form of matter. All is vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. The vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity that the rapidity, the, the rapidness of that vibration is practically at rest. So it would look like a straight line, like a flat line to our, to our perceptions. And at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter whose vibration are so low as it seems to be at rest also. So it would also look like a, a flat line in, in this, um, this example. So this is coming directly out of the book, The Kybalion, which, you know, obviously we're recommending for all to read to understand natural law. If you want to understand natural law, you need to read this book. And we don't agree with everything in it. I can't necessarily speak for too many other people, but me and Nate did talk about this a little bit. So I can, uh, conf you know, confirm that he said that he doesn't agree with everything in it either. So I'm not trying to speak for Nate here, but I don't agree with everything in it. But most of it I do agree with, especially when it comes to these principles. So cymatics is the best example I can give 
of the principle of vibration. I would recommend uh, just searching cymatics in your YouTube browser and you will come across all kinds of scientific experiments where they show how vibration creates forms and vibration is coming from the source consciousness. It's coming from correspondence, which is also coming from the mind. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because, yeah, we're, Brandon and I uh, are just reading these kind of like uh, mid-sized parts that we mostly agree with from the Kybalion. And it's very important to always, you know, keep your eye open for, you know, anything that might be a little bit off. I mean, I don't think that this book was like made with an agenda behind it to get people to believe a certain way because it's one of the most open-minded uh, books that I've ever read because it's not really uh, you know telling you that you have to believe all these things and, it, and obviously you shouldn't believe anything that you read you should it's it's more about like just you know using your discernment and understanding where the falsehoods are or weeding them out and you know as for the principle of vibration uh, it is one of the most Obviously, all these principles, I will say again and again, they're all equally as important, but to understand the principle of vibration is one of the, the most powerful things to ever understand because, wow, holy shit. Did you hear the thunder? Did, did you, yeah, did you hear the vibration of that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a little vibration for you. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Go ahead. Okay. Well, here we go. Um. Uh, well, here I want to add one more thing to the, the to the principle of vibration here, which is you know light, sound, consciousness, heat, electromagnetic fields, and life itself are all governed by the properties of waves, and waves are vibration. And when we understand wave potentials, like I, I think that uh, studying quantum theory is a really good place for for the newbie or the initiate to start out with to kind of understand how waves work but vibration is so important when it comes to understanding how everything in our world is created and and how we generate things and what we're doing with um there's some heavy vibration for you and what we're doing with our minds and what we're doing with our own vibrations right yeah, the thunder coming to this this section of our show is is pretty uh, synchronistic, I'd say. I would um, agree with that. <laughs> um, it's interesting because it is one of the most like it's it's something you definitely understand to be vibrational. It's something you you can feel the vibration of thunder to where you know there are vibrations happening at the most you know subatomic level that you're not seeing and you're not feeling you're not hearing so it's uh, completely out of your your senses and the principle of vibration is also is what is you know the the or the energy that you are emitting is the energy that you're going to receive and um and it is it goes back to what i was saying in podcast number nine where i'm talking about the measurement of the intelligence of the universe and how you know like you know the actions the vibration the negative or the positive vibration is constantly being measured intelligently by the universe so to understand the principle of vibration is to understand that the energy that you are emitting is being intelligently measured and it will be shown to you whether a negative consequence or a positive consequence absolutely very well said so uh, moving on to the principle of polarity everything is dual everything has poles everything has its pair of opposites like and unlike are the same opposites are identical in nature but different in degree extremes meet all truths are but half truths all paradoxes may be reconciled and that's straight out of the kybalion this principle embodies the truth that everything is dual everything has its two poles everything has its pair of opposites 
all of which were old hermetic axioms. Uh, it explains the old paradoxes that have perplexed so many, which have been stated as follows. Thesis and antithesis are identical in nature, but different in degree. Opposites are the same, differing only in degree. The pairs of opposites may be reconciled. Extremes meet. Everything is and isn't at the same time. All truths are but half-truths. Every truth is half-false. There are two sides to everything, etc., etc., etc. It explains that in everything there are two poles or opposite aspects and that opposites are really only the two extremes of the same thing which many verifying degrees are with many verifying degrees between them to illustrate heat and cold although opposites are really the same thing the, the difference is consisting merely of degrees of the same thing look at your thermometer and see if you can discover where heat terminates and cold begins. There is no such thing as absolute heat or absolute cold. The two terms, heat and cold, simply indicate verifying degrees of the same thing. And that same thing, which is, it's, that's what's manifested as heat and cold. It's merely a form of variety and rate of vibration so heat and cold are simply the two poles of that which we call heat and the phenomena attendant there um, thereupon are manifestations of the principle of polarity the same principle manifests in the case of light and darkness which are the same thing the difference consisting of verifying degrees between the two poles of the phenomena. Where does darkness leave off and light begin? So where does darkness leave off and where does light begin? What is the difference between large and small, between hard and soft, between black and white, between sharp and and dull between noise and quiet between high and low between positive and negative the principle of polarity explains these paradoxes and no other principle can supersede it the same principle operates on the mental plane let us take a radical and extreme example that of love and hate two mental states apparently totally different and yet there are degrees of hate and degrees of love and a middle point in which we use the terms like or dislike, which shade into each other so gradually that sometimes we are at a loss to know whether we like or dislike or neither. And all are simply degrees of the same thing, as you will see, if you will but think a moment. And more than this, and considered of more importance by the Hermeticists, it is possible to change the vibrations of hate to the vibrations of love in one's own mind and in the minds of others. Many of you who read these lines have had personal experiences of the involuntary rapid transition from love to hate and the reverse in your own case and that of others. And you will therefore realize the possibility of this being accomplished by the use of the will, by means of the hermetic formulas. In short, the art of polarization becomes a phase of mental alchemy, known and practiced by the ancient and modern hermetic masters. An understanding of the principle will enable one to change his own polarity as well as that of others if he will devote the time and study necessary to master the art and that all comes from the what i just read was from straight from the cavalian so what when it comes to the polarity of knowledge and ignorance are they 
really the same thing? Yes, yes, they are very much the same thing because truth is always present. It's a matter of whether it's taken in and processed or it's refused to be taken in and it's not processed. It's about understanding that they are identical in their nature but different in their degree. That was very well said and um, we have some some heavy thunder coming in <laughs> which is pretty <laughs> pretty intense for this section of the the podcast which right. I find very synchronistic but uh, polarity is extremely important to understand we were talking about polarity when it comes to the functionalities of the left and right brain and and of consciousness right of masculine and feminine attributes um, but I think polarity is something a lot of people don't have a very good grip on that they don't really understand what you mean by things like polarized dialectics what you mean by having somebody in a polarization so whenever somebody is polarized it means that they have been divided within you know it's us versus them right something along those lines and through understanding this principle we can reconcile uh the way that our our ego is taking uh our consciousness into these negative places in our minds and what we're doing with that consciousness so you could also call it dualism you know so i talked about being an internal dualism which is where you don't want to be you want to be an internal unity because everything is seemingly dualistic but the underlying energy is is a singular thing so everything is seemingly uh, polarized but the underlying energy is of the same thing you know like you were talking about with hot and cold there's only one energy underneath of that and it's the measurement of how intense that energy is that determines whether it's hot and cold and you really can't put a finger on where things become hot and where things become cold like the exact pinpoint you know and that's right. the same with light and darkness. They are uh, varying degrees of the same energy. So this does directly have to do with wavelengths and vibration. And that's why this is the fourth of the principles, because it's a it's it's a manifestation of the three previous into a new form in in reality. So I think that's uh, very right. important to understand. Do, do you have anything else you want to add on that? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and, and just to, uh, like, we've, something we've already touched on, I think I believe you touched on it in uh, earlier shows, is the, the principle of freedom. You know, so if you understand that freedom means to be free of any rulers and to not be ruled by another, and then you understand that, you know, slavery is to be ruled by someone and to be enslaved, well, those are two poles of the same thing. So the more moral uh, a society becomes, the more that society becomes free. And the more immoral that society becomes, the more that society becomes enslaved. And so when you really start to understand polarity, then you start to see how enslaved most of this world is and maybe even yourself so it's very important to uh, apply these principles and this one i think polarity is uh, really one of the most powerful as far as applying this principle to all things everything in the whole universe has its dualistic polarities and uh, we're going to further get into that as we um, go along in these principles. Absolutely. I think another thing that we can add in is it helps us to understand how we're manipulated. It helps us to see through mind control techniques because it's all always about splitting us into two. You know, it's always about dividing. Right. So what mind control is all about is about dividing the mind to create a schism in the mind so that you are easily controlled. And if you can see that through the principle of polarity, then you can start to mend that. Uh, but also there's, there's, uh, you know, there's always going to be poles to everything like you're talking about. Um, but we do have to understand 
uh, how that's part of the illusionary construct of of reality. You know that that's the that's the effect in reality is to have a North Pole, a South Pole. You know, hot and cold. But the underlying essence is that of one thing, and that's what would be the mind, the mentalism. You know, so that's why. It, it um, you know, is manifested this way because the mind manifests itself into two. And if you didn't notice, like numerologically, we can look at the number four very symbolically of polarity when you start to break that down because it is about twos, you know, it, it does have to do with twos just like correspondence is about two things also, you know, but I don't know if you understood what I was saying there, but I, the, the way that I see that in my mind, I relate that back to twos, you know, when I, when I, when I think of four, like four corners, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And to really hammer home on that is you have to understand, you cannot understand the one without the two. So it's about understanding both sides to understand the whole uh, spectrum and and that's uh that's how we find balance that's how we fine tune that's how we get back to a uh, a balanced mind because you know like we said in the other show about the schisms you know we can definitely uh, be on one side or the other or completely you know on both and then not be merged or unified in the middle to where we are one where we understand that we are one, where we understand our connection. But then the reason that we understand that is because we do understand the two. Right. So. Absolutely. Well said. That's pretty much what I was getting at with that. If you want to go ahead and jump right into rhythm, another important principle. Right. So the next principle of the seven hermetic principles is the fifth principle, which is, which is the principle of rhythm. This states everything flows in and out. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. So as you can tell that these things are definitely all interconnected and have a relationship with each other. This rhythm has to do with vibration without vibration you cannot have rhythm so to continue on here this principle embodies the truth that in everything there is manifested a measured motion to and fro a flow and inflow a swing backward and forward and like i said a pendulum like movement a tide like ebb and flow a high tide, a low tide between the two poles, which exist in accordance with the principle of polarity described a moment ago. There is always an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and a sinking. This is in the affairs of the universe, suns, worlds, men, animals, mind, energy, and matter. This law is manifest in the creation and destruction of the world in the rise and fall of nations, in life of all things, and finally in the mental states of man. But that's the end of the, the uh, principle of rhythm. And we find the principle of rhythm in things like music. You know, without, without rhythm, we have, no, we have no flow within our creative process. We have no means to, to really express ourselves dynamically in our world so music is the best example of rhythm that i can give as a musician i i love to you know play my sit down and play, find the most harmonic and and intimate rhythm that i can find that really brings out my soul to manifest into into just beautiful musical patterns and fractal patterns all all across the scales so we find a rhythm in all things. We have a rhythm in our life. A lot of people are unconscious of the rhythm in their own life. And this can be their daily habits, their patterns, and, you know, the way that they do things here and there, the way that they go to sleep, what time they go to sleep, what time they wake up. There's always a rhythm that you can find. And when you start to open your mind and see the rhythm within your own behaviors, then you can really start to pinpoint 
uh, where you want to change that rhythm, where you want to compose yourself a little bit better. You know, maybe you want to have more of a swing over here, which will create a swing to the opposite side, like the pendulum. So rhythm is extremely important and it is within all things there's a rhythm to the universe there's a rhythm to the way the planets move there's a rhythm to the way storms roll in and roll out um so whenever we start to open our eyes to this this is the alchemical site when we can see rhythm within nature the rhythm of the trees the way that the the wind blows through the tree leaves we can see rhythm in that the way that dogs harmonize with each other when they're howling there's rhythm in that there's rhythm all around us and i just find it very just mind-boggling and just eye-opening when we start to uh, really correlate all the rhythms of our own lives and we start to find what rhythm that we want to be in also you know like we want to be in rhythm with the truth you know do we want to uh align ourselves with the truth the rhythm of the universe or do we want to align ourselves with a rhythm that is you know destructive the destructive rhythm of the world so i just think that yeah. um you know, do you have something to say on that well, speaking of uh, rhythm, there's the rhythm of, of peeing, and I have to pee really bad right now. So I'm, we're, we're, we're coming up on the break, and uh, we will be right back, so stay tuned. Well, that's actually the end of the show, guys. Thanks for tuning in and giving this information your time and attention. You can find more of our work here at cubbyhole.com. That's C-U-B-B-Y-W-H-O-L-E.com. There you'll find news, updates, videos, and much more. So we hope you found value here today, and please tune in to the next show where we go further into the hermetic principles, including uh, the principle of cause and effect, the principle of gender, and the lost principle, which is the principle of care. It is really important to watch these shows in order and not miss any shows so that way you get the full picture and you have a better understanding of what we're trying to say and what the bigger message is here so that being said thanks for being on the show today brandon and thank you all for listening have an awesome day All right, thank you if you made it this far uh, the next episode is going to be episode number 14 and uh yeah, I'm not gonna fight the, f I'm not gonna fight the final boss until I level up again because he destroys me every time. Um, but yeah, thanks again if you made it this far. Keep studying and stay tuned. Stay in tuned and stay golden.